We have so much to cover in this episode, so I'm glad that everybody's here, and I am happy to welcome you back with us. Well, I'm oh, happy to be back, um, Liz and Heather, so in no particular order, Heather and Liz. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that said, Heather, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure thing. I'm Heather Satterley, and I am the Director of Education and Media at Woodard. I'm also a CPA and kind of a tech nerd. I like um, building things with technology and tinkering. And yeah, that's me. And I love happy hour. That's me. You're muted, Liz. I am Liz Scott, and I am fortunate to be able to live in a state that I get to travel a lot. I don't love Oklahoma, but I do love traveling. So that's been super, super fun. Um, I enjoy working with um, training. I like processes. I like breaking it down so that way it's digestible. So that's one of the things that I get to do. Um, I love our accounting community. So I do that for our accounting community whenever it comes to a lot of the trainings that you see that are provided by different developer buddies that are in our are in our um, industry. So it's been fun. I enjoy what um, this year and and the future comes uh, has to hold for our firm. And I'm excited to introduce our really good friend. So you've been with us before, but I'd love for you to be able to give a chance to our audience to introduce yourself and give a little bit of background. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our, our product, what we'll go through is automating bookkeeping, mostly for small business and mostly then for QuickBooks uh, with some you know, additions and deviations. And so I started out as the, the product person from a technical side um, as part of our being acquired in the good way by a company called Constellation Software based in Toronto. Um, I ended up kind of um, in, the, in the driver's seat. And so uh, what we'll dovetail into is why I have a lantern on <laughs> right now. Um, but it's been a real pleasure, you know, working with folks like Liz and Heather because uh, we went to market first in 2014 with one of the logos that you'll see on one of the subsequent slides. And it was a very new kind of concept, I think, at the time for not just, you know, sales reps for payments companies, but also, uh, you know, for, for a lot of accountants. And so it's been great. Uh, this is my third time on Appy Hour, and it's always a blast, as you'll probably see with some giggles uh, over the course of the presentation amidst all the technical and uh, granular stuff. One of the things I love about having you on is that you are so knowledgeable and you're going to be able to, to see that audience throughout today's um, session. But I, I have to say, you have taken the time to thoroughly understand the industry's problems. And that sometimes means, you know, having these one-on-one -on -one meetings where you'll ask questions and dive into, well, how come that, Liz? And you've really incorporated the community's feedback. And it's awesome and it's so appreciated. And that is one of the reasons why we love having you on. We, you know, Commerce Sync is one of those areas that, um, you know, e-commerce is thriving and changing and evolving. And so does Commerce Sync. So those of you who have been familiar with Commerce Sync in the past and know that every once in a while they just keep on adding to, you're going to see some add twos today. So just because you know Commerce Sync from the past doesn't mean that you know what they've got all cooking right now. So I'm I anxious. have a story, mm -hmm. to share, just a quick one. I'll make it really quick. I went to the mm -hmm. liquor store to buy my my ingredients for our drink today. And I've got to turn that off. I'm sorry, everybody. It keeps zooming in. Everybody. It makes me laugh every time. Because no, what happens <laughs> it's, it's watching my hands. It's powered. The AI is powered. It's whatever. It's powered by my hands. So I talk with my hands and no, I'm not Italian, um, but I do talk with my hands. So anyway, I'm at the liquor store buying the ingredients for our lovely drink today. And I happen to know the guy who owns the liquor store. He's, you know, a friend of mine. And so he was telling me, he's like, are you still doing QuickBooks? I'm like, you're doing a whole lot with it right now. He goes, well, because I'm thinking about switching to Clover. And I'm like, what? 
And <laughs> I'm like, well, you can't just switch to Clover. You can implement Clover, but you're still going to have to get the information into a general ledger package like QuickBooks. I'm like, and I'm just a way to go talk about a solution that actually does that really well. So it was just kind of funny that the liquor store guy Clover's ever get an e-commerce yes. thing. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. point Thank of sale, e-commerce. I mean, those are all areas right. that, that people need easy payment solutions. They do. Well, thank no you so much. Time. Thank you so much, Heather. I think the timing might be good for me to buy you another birthday drink, given <laughs> yeah. the in, in the loo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to announce that Commerce Sync is one of our annual sponsors this year. So Thank you. You will be seeing more from Commerce Sync information. Um, watch for, out for the newsletters for things to come. So uh, we want to go ahead and dive into some of our specials that are out here from some of our annual sponsors. So Rewind has got the 25% off for two months through May. So make sure to act on that within the next month. Client Hub is offering a free version of their platform. And Cinder, who we will be hearing from in May, also has a daily sync summary. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick us off because we've got Commerce Sync in the house and I'm gonna pass it over to you. So you wanna go ahead and tell us Stephen what you are up to? Absolutely, right now before uh, we, we really begin, uh, I, I actually, I just adopted a pair, a bonded pair of shelter cats, which is really, really great. Um, and unfortunately, I can't, you know, have the friendly one in my lap because we're at a conference called Electronic Transactions Association or ETA that uh, I'm sure a lot of people uh, here are familiar with either directly or um, indirectly uh, out here in Atlanta. And so that'll dovetail into some of the things that we go over because one of our core competencies that we provide is expertise in both payments and accounting. When people try to reach out to one, they may not know about the other. And then you kind of play play a game of, of ring around the rosy kind of thing. And so uh, that's where we are today. And not just speaking with point of sale providers and processors, but accountants as well. I've had a couple of meetings with, with accountants who are, who are interested, who have clients that use uh, some of the uh, channel partners uh, for their for their client base that will go over on what may be the next slide, but it, it could be a different slide. We'll have to see uh, Liz's creativity. <laughs> and I'm going to take the lanyard off. That was just and what I was just going to say is that, that you are you are currently at a conference, which a lot of us are all familiar with accounting conferences, but you're doing the thing that we were always talking about, going to the other conferences, seeing what else is happening. And so right. this Electronic Transactions Association, this is a conference that right now I'm sure is a hot topic because everything is online, all kinds of electronic um, payments. So it's yeah. it's cool that you are there. Every 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 payment provider, whether it's point of sale, whether it's uh, you, you know a, a, a gateway, uh, whether it's an ISO, is is here, either with a booth or you know snooping around, wondering what I'm doing. So, <laughs> well, so one of the questions is why Commerce Sync, and I, the next slide should answer that. Well, am I, uh, so let's see, is this not the slide that you were expecting? Because I think that was right after. It was the benefit slide. My apologies. Uh -huh. there are, yeah, we, I think we we're going to do our drink. So maybe just move the, we'll go to the drink and then we'll come back to this and then we'll go to the, yeah. Okay, okay. perfect. Yeah, because we figured that this would be fun to do our drink and then we can focus on all the things. So what. I'm going to do is, all right, so I told you guys about my camera that keeps watching me. Well, it also does this really cool thing, although I haven't figured out how to make it right side up. I can actually do desktop view mode. So you guys can now see my lap and in front of me is the drink. So this cool drink, if you look at the picture, is supposed to be layered and it's kind of hard to layer it, but I'm going to try and demonstrate and I apologize that I'm upside down, but we're just going to have to deal with that. So I've got, I went to, oh, I think I have to go out like this. Like I have to do everything backwards. So I've got my coffee liqueur. Oh wait, the coffee liqueur is Kahlua. So that's what I've got first. 
So you have to layer it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in. Pour. So there's my first layer um, that you guys can see. It, it's not working so great, Liz. So I think I'm yeah, gonna- keep going. This is so much fun. I'm gonna talk about the fiery B-52 because- <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna be able to, um, to, to put it on fire because I don't, they didn't have the 151 proof rum. And so- Ah, okay. That was gonna be my next question. question. Right, so here's the trick. So here's the trick okay. for the actual layering is that you use a spoon, wait, you use a spoon, right? And you turn it upside down and then you put it against the glass and then you pour the, the next layer on the spoon and it actually starts to create another layer. So it's, it's not pouring it into the other layer, it's pouring it on top of it. Now I'm gonna do the Grand Marnier. I got my little Grand Marnier here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the next layer. <gasps> looks like it's mixing. So I think I'm doing it. Oh, there we go. Oh, it looks great from this angle, Heather. There You're it killing it. It's going. <laughs> it's going. It's going. By the way, this was my favorite shot when I was a younger woman. All right. So I did it. Now I'm going to switch my camera back because it looks weird from that. It looks very weird from that angle. So let's go back to this and then let's bring it in. Come here, I'm right here. All right. And now here's my beautiful finished drink. Oh, you did so good. Oh, really oh that's really good. Didn't I come out nice? Yeah, that's spectacular. I'm afraid to drink it though. See I have a really sad one because the bartender, because I'm at a bar and I can't go buy Kahlua around the corner, um, given the size of Atlanta, it's really more of a B2 instead of a B52, which actually technically that's a fine plan because this is Stealth Palmer, but um, <laughs> I, I think I'll still enjoy it. So should we cheers, Heather, or are you going to just admire it? I'm a little afraid to drink it because I really haven't been drinking and this isn't, I also haven't been eating sugar. And so this is three shots of alcohol and a ton of sugar, but I will take a sip of it. How about okay, that? Yeah, in right, I'm not going to do a I'll shot. Drink with you. Right. In the spirit of here's, wellness. Here's to automation. To automation and to kind of close things in a bow. I think a lot of us know the B-52s. Mm -hmm. And so I have a really good tagline that I came up with, which is probably not very good. But we're entering the tech stack love shack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best name that is the best name it could not yep. be better Stephen. and then um finally we all remember tom cruise not just from his exploits in top gun and, and uh uh maverick but also uh his performance in the 1987 masterpiece cocktail so masterpiece yep that, that, was, that was that was the joke <laughs> so um, dear Lord, I love the tech stack love shack. Yeah, Nancy is a big I love that. I, I feel like, oh my gosh. Well, so let me make sure that I've got these slides in the order that you want. So um, what it's were you expecting to see right now? The, the benefits, which is slide 12, Liz. Yeah, ben benefits and uh, like channel the channel partners wheel up front before we get into the kind of the meat of the meeting. Um, and those can go in either order. That's fine. Uh, cause we have the, the big section on the, as yet unnamed new partner before we get into the end game. So. So key benefits right here. Yes. Okay. You got it. So always good to, you know, start with the benefit before you get into the, 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 the feature and the how, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we talk about is the key benefit for businesses, and we all know this, um, using technology to automate, you know, functions like bookkeeping saves overworked businesses time. Uh, the average of 300 hours a year is based upon an average of 50 transactions per day and doing like a one minute per transaction uh, type of math. But the benefits extend beyond not just that and expertise within reach, which we'll get into more in a moment, but for the sales reps that are going out and connecting these merchants with you know, the ability to uh, process credit cards, it's a sticky offering. So the end on the note on this slide, 
that uh, businesses that use uh, uh, you know, uh, products like CommerceSync are much more likely to stay with their payment provider than they are with someone who isn't. Then it's much easier to, to move around. Um, I think to, to Heather's point, uh, talking about uh, her uh, uh, wine peddler friend, um, that's exactly the, the, the case where they get scared because they don't know that this is possible to do like really, really quickly. And then finally, you know, what we found is that we can help accountants service more clients faster. So we're taking out, I think, some of the boring bits and, and letting you, you know, uh, instead of just uh, back of the envelope math, uh, five clients for $100, say 10 clients for $75. You're making more money and, and you're serving people in a, in a more accurate fashion. So those are kind of like the, the 5,000 foot views of the benefits for the product that we're about to talk about a little bit more over the next uh, 39 minutes. You know, and I think that that's like the, the how do I, I want to say the, Ros I want to say the Rosetta Stone, but that's not what I mean. It's kind of like the secret decoder ring, right? Of when you have a really good product that can sync e-commerce into, you know, the general ledger. Right. And you're able to, at a moment's notice, have your reports in your general ledger match the reports that you're running in whatever third party, you know, point of sale or payments or whatever. And you have the match at a moment's notice. That is like having the secret decoder ring because we really do struggle with that. You know, where our client asks us questions, we pull up a report in QuickBooks, it doesn't match what we're seeing in Shopify or Clover or you know, another payment platform and our clients are asking us why. So having something that's going to bring that information in accurately is just a huge time saver, not just in the recording aspect, which, you know, of course that is, but also in the reconciliation part of it. Right. And that's, and that's go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that's why improves accuracy is, is number two there. Uh, I had the analogy of, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone that I knew that was a um, classical violinist, and she was made a lot of her money teaching kids so she could go get, you know, chairs at, at orchestras in Colorado. And part of what I learned is that it's 17 times, it takes 17 times more time to unlearn bad habits than it does if you had never done it in the first place. And that was kind of a, a big part of my product strategy was like, if we have any doubt, don't enter it because it's going to create a huge mess and nobody's going to like that. It's going to cost the merchant more money, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, a good point to underline, Heather. Thank you. Well, I love that. Um, so where would you like to go next? I almost wonder if you would like to be the driver of these slides to ensure that you're going in the order that you want, unless... It's, it's, a, it's okay. As long as you have the, the big chunk, like kind of contiguous, then then I'm fine. I, I have my own notes. So let's just okay. uh, get uh, move move on. Okay. Well, then I'm going to take us to where we were whenever we're talking about all of the trusted by the biggest names and payments. So do we want to talk about some of those? Yeah, let's, let's do that next. That sounds great. Okay. So let me pull that up here because while we're talking about payments, there's so much here on the screen. And I think that we've already seen in chat, somebody talking about authorized.net. Right. So yeah, yes. So this. Yes, and and try to keep this brief because this could turn into a six hour <laughs> seminar, and it it did when you know we were acquired. Uh, we we support AuthorizeNet in our partnership with Visa. A little bit more about Visa will come up uh, later on, and they have like fifty people at this conference for obvious reasons. Uh, our first Appy Hour, we uh, which was March twenty twenty, we talked about Clover. We were the fourth app on their app store and have over uh, a, a lot of merchants with uh, with Clover, um, over 15,000 overall aggregate. And then we talked a little bit more about buy now, pay later uh, several months ago uh, in the context of, of Square uh, with the way that they've handled uh, that. And now we're gonna bring up one of these other partners uh, later in the conversation. 
So what we really, really love is when an accountant is, you know, working with Commerce Inc for clients of different channel partners. Mm -hmm. So all of the people that you talk to have all of these as options and others. So it's super fun when someone's using like Square and Stripe at the same time, but it's even more fun when we have an accountant that's happy about their experience with us on Clover or Square, and then they have someone that is using a client, a potential client that's using a different uh, payment provider that we can support because then they get a, a single point of contact in terms of the support that we can provide. And you know, as um, as Liz alluded to, especially over the past three years, uh, e-commerce has been very dynamic. And so being able to, you know, trust that Square suddenly put all of their restaurants on Weebly like about two years earlier than they planned to, because otherwise, you know, no one was going to be able to do business. Uh, that that underscores that point uh, really well. Our ability to both uh, work in a lot of contexts and adapt quickly and support uh, whomever is doing the accounting bookkeeping function related to payments. I think that that's a, a really interesting point where a lot of people are trying to determine you know, which solution do I use? And whenever they're thinking about not only the e-commerce piece of it, they also have to consider and often gets more tricky than just the e-commerce. It's all the payments. So it's the syncing and the activity of the payments that get really messy. Correct. Yes. And that's one of the first questions when you're like, okay, I can, you know, maybe do this for my credit card processing. Then what about my employee management? What about my tax filing? What about my bookkeeping? And so the question is, oftentimes you have someone who's operating a vape shop or a pizza place or a coffee shop or taking donations online through Offnet it would literally be, do you QuickBooks? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and so the answer do is yes. <laughs> yes. And that's what I try to encourage my engineering team to think think about in terms of our, you know who we're working with because they they may be fantastic at making a pie, but have absolutely no understanding of accounting whatsoever. And so they're going to listen to what whomever their trusted advisors are uh, at hand. And so we've worked that out again over the years since being in market in 2014, and that's a good kind of segue into this slide is one of our key differentiators is we have a you know a dedicated team that knows about payments and knows about accounting and multiple ways in which we can you know, uh, uh, reach or be reached by uh, these uh, not just merchants but also again the sales reps uh, uh, accountants slash bookkeepers and sometimes you know interested partners which is what I'm swimming in down here. We're already a day into the conference and I'm like, my legs are sore. <laughs> you know, but one of the things I love about when you go to a conference and when you bring team members to conferences, you really are investing in the people and the conversations and the needs. And I know that firsthand from being at a conference with you and the way that you'll dig in. And that's part of creating that customer experience because you are very much, you know, ears to the ground and listening. Right. Not and, and uh, the, you know, and we've been able to hire given our, our you know, knock on wood, uh, <laughs> EBITDA. Um, but uh, at, at, at the same time, like we'll have some folks over at uh, Scaling New Heights and hopefully not just yourself and Heather, but we'll get to meet a lot of people on, on this webinar uh, when we're when we're in, in St. Louis in June. I definitely encourage people, if you see him walking around, you go grab him and say, hi, Stephen, I want to talk to you because he's going to talk to you too. That's one of the reasons why I'm very excited for this new Lightspeed X series. So do we want to have a conversation here and talk about what is Lightspeed X series and what Correct. about this whole need for a whole group of people that are in point of sale that need somewhere to go? For example, these QuickBooks desktop people. Right. So a lot of um, a lot a lot of people don't necessarily know about this because a lot of things have happened over the past three years, um, not just in terms of what's what happened in e-commerce, what's happening in in tech industry now. 
but then also, uh, you know, with mergers and acquisitions and things of that nature, because some people, you know, took advantage of their situation. And so Lightspeed is, is I don't want to say a legacy point of sale, but they're certainly venerable and they've been around for a bit. They're based in like Toronto and Montreal mo most, mostly, but Lightspeed X series, they acquired a company called Vend, which had a, you know, a, a pretty good kind of profile uh, based out of Australia and New Zealand and have now rebranded Vend as Lightspeed X series. And so I have had like 50% of the conversations are, did not know that, like they know about Vend, but they don't know that the relationship with Lightspeed and what they're doing. And so uh, Lightspeed did that with a number of other orgs. I don't know if this is the next slide, their acquisitions, although the- Oh, you gotta love this one right here. Look at you, oh, taking that's, off. Oh, that's, uh, wow, you did me very well. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, uh, I, I I owe you one alongside Heather's birthday drink in June. Um, Blast it off there. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, Lightspeed kind of went on an acquiring spree during during but a little bit before, but then during the pandemic, and so Upserve on the uh, uh, restaurant front, Shopkeep on the more pure retail front and equid on the e-commerce front. So you can see how this, it, not to get too like uh, macro with what's been going on, but there have been companies like Pfizer buying First Data, which owns Clover, Square buying Weebly, on and on and on. And so we just wanna be on top of this. And what's particularly good about the Lightspeed relationship is that we already support folks like Clover and Square alongside folks like Stripe and authorize net. And so we can really do well for their user base because they're going to try to like consolidate everything into like the X series and the S series, basically Elon with Tesla in a way. I'm sure that that's a funny a topic of conversation in the boardroom um, in that regard, but that's the, 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 the lay of the land. And so what we're going to do over the, the half hour that we have left is get a little deeper into what our new offering for Lightspeed X series rebranded Vend uh, entails. And I love that you're, you're first starting here by saying, if you're in one of these categories, if you're in restaurant, if you're in the point of sale, if you're in e-commerce, you know, these are all areas that fit now inside of the suite of products that you can serve. So yes, we're getting ready to go deeper, but I mean, it's really nice to take this very broad look at, there is a lot going on. So that's what, you know, partly I was talking about earlier where I was like, you might know Commerce Sync, but you're getting ready to learn some new cool stuff. So let's talk about onboarding. So uh, this will be relatively quick because the onboarding process is relatively quick in some cases too quick and we had to put in like a like a pause so that people had expectation of what was going on but fundamentally you know with with uh, the authorization technology OAuth 2 you can discover from anywhere so this is a picture of the landing page on our website but it could be an apps.com listing it could be a marketing campaign it could be a google ad it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the fundamental point is that there's a centralized way to route everyone in to onboarding for our product. And I'm going to call out here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I want to make sure that everybody's paying attention to that this does say QuickBooks Desktop 2. It does, yeah. And that's that's one of the largest points of, of uh, our that's honestly where our partnership with Venn started from day one. Uh, you know, they had free offerings in QuickBooks Online and Zero, and sometimes you get what you pay for. I'm confident enough to say that now, but they didn't have anything for QuickBooks Desktop, and those tend to be, you know, merchants that are higher gross processing volume, and QuickBooks Desktop just isn't going away for the foreseeable future. Uh, as much as our, our old um, friend Brad Smith was saying that on stage at QuickBooks Connect in 2014. Uh, and so be that as it may, like we've adopted the same type of technology uh, for QuickBooks Desktop that we use for QuickBooks Online and Zero, and actually some other new partners now 
uh, in terms of the ease of use. It's always going to be more challenging to download software that can connect to a PC or remote hosting like right networks or SwizzNet type of type of thing. We support all of that. It's just instead of two minutes, it's 10. And we have a team that'll hold your hand through the process. Again, because we, we go through a huge range of technical uh, cap capability as I'm sure everyone on this webinar is familiar with where you have like a Stripe customer who's a ninja coder versus you know someone who knows absolutely nothing about technology and you, you say like can you turn it on and off type of thing i i'm seeing some comments over in chat right now and it's like oh my gosh quickbooks desktop too and i think that that's one of the things that um, people who have been using point of sale and quickbooks desktop for a long time have been looking scrambling for a solution so remember all of the different suite of products that are being served here underneath this Lightspeed X series and Commerce Sync. And so that's where you start getting into some really cool opportunities. So do we want to talk about the authorization? I think that this part, most people are very familiar with. They're, they're comfortable with how you connect to QuickBooks and just how quick it is. But is there anything else here that you would want to add on? I, I wouldn't say so, um, other than the fact that you get the same experience within our QuickBooks desktop client, which we have a little little snippet about in a subsequent slide. But other than that, it's the exact same that you get from connecting to QBO uh, in terms of connecting to Lightspeed, and, and we've made it as close as possible with QuickBooks desktop. The requirements are a little bit different with the way that integrated apps work with um, QBD. But fundamentally, it's authorization on one side, authorization on the other side, some optional features, and then you're technically live. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just to make sure that we're talking about understanding what all is included. So when we're thinking about any type of, of point of sale, any type of, you know, even the payment piece of it. Um, e-commerce, you know, those are all areas where we've got this huge chunk of data. We have a lot of transactions that are happening and we have a lot of dollars that are at stake. That's where a lot of accountants are getting bogged down in the bookkeeping. This is where we're having problems with how do we integrate? How do we make sure that it's importing information correctly? And that's where we come into this saving time with automation. So this this setup piece the piece where we're coming over here and we're talking about you know commerce sync and being able to see some of the other things that are out there that um you know are comparable but yet again we're bringing in this large uh, you know suite of products that we're able to offer to our clients so i'm going to pass it back over to you because i really want to hear about this example that you've got here laid out for us Right. So in the context of Lightspeed X series, uh, rebranded Vend, we'll give a little end to end overview of how things work. And so let's say I'm you know, running a business that's fashion based. Um, I've got my My Girl sunglasses and I've got my red Argyles. I really like Argyle socks. That's just my thing. And so this is the checkout experience. I hit pay and then you move on to the next slide. This is a sales report of everything that occurred on a particular day. Uh, one thing I want to point out in terms of specificity is you see a couple of details like return and park return, because that's people return things. And especially one of the uh, accounting complexities that we've run into over the past couple of years is just the concept of retail exchange. It's really funny that like there are things uh, that have gone back to like, 2000 BC elements of trade. Like if I buy a pair of pants, I can, I, and I want to return them because I don't like them, whatever. I want a different color. And then I go in and if I get something that's more the same or less, then that has an impact on accounting that ultimately has an impact on reconciliation. And so part of why I use this particular screen is to show that we you know, take into account these types of things because it's going to be something that you're going to have to deal with at the end of the month 
or the quarter. And if you're working with, you know, someone else, then, uh, then, you know, you're going to scratch your, you know, pull your hair out trying to figure out what the actual problem is. And that comes back to my 17 times as long when you enter things incorrectly. And so this is a segue into our daily summary example. And this is where things get like really fun. And so everyone will end up having access to not just the, the uh, presentation, but also all of the annotation that comes afterwards. Uh, into it, sometimes you can get really simple where, oh, hey, this is all of the things that I sold on July 26, 2021. Part of why I use that as an example is our ability to transfer information historically without any limits other than like it not being available on the payment API. That ends up being really important from a, from a sale perspective because when someone's coming in and trying to set up a business or change their point of sale provider, they're gonna ask like, oh, I have this QuickBooks connection, is it gonna go away? And then we can say, well, actually, you'll be fine. Just make sure your credit card stuff works and we can go back in time as, as far as you need for free as just as part of the process. And so that's like really valuable. And I know I talked about this before, but the best thing I've ever done was um, offering historical transfer for, for free for a long time to help businesses complete their PPP loans. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's really fantastic. And uh, that's, I think that's the first time I've said that without like starting to cut onions in, in a bit, but I've got my game face on. And, and so that's just one example of all of the sales you saw on the previous slide are aggregated appropriately. And where things start to get challenging is when you're dealing with a blend of like taxable and non-taxable, you know, items that are in, in the case of uh, bullet point number two, uh, that's a category set up in Vend that's mapped to an income account automatically. Uh, that is, that's been a, a very popular feature. I think something to the effect of 50% of Clover uh, users employ it, despite the fact that it's a couple of more dollars. But you have to separate that out from a reporting perspective here. One of the next slides shows uh, uh, all of the implications of sales tax reporting in excruciating detail. So that might not be the best you know, use of, of the last 18 minutes here, but all of the things that can that can happen. And so we covered off on the first couple. Uh, gift card is liability is, is another important one. Think about it like when bought, someone buys a gift card. Uh, you are getting a liability on the books because you're taking in money for something that's going to be spent later. And so it needs not to be income. Fine grain detail, but absolutely important from, from a, you know, accounting perspective from a small business for understanding like when they're taking in money or, or not. And uh, if you want to maybe move, move on to the next slide, it's probably appropriate. So our sales tax call-outs and, and payments. Uh, let's, yeah, just pause here um, really quick, just for a couple of points. Uh, a couple of interesting things that have emerged is just, you know, emergence of payments by tender type. And where it gets particularly interesting is the proliferation of use of services like DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and how that's actually tracked from an accounting perspective, because people think they take in $35 when they actually only get $27.50 because DoorDash, you know, took, took their cut. And so that's something else that, that we've, we've been working on over the past, since before COVID, really. And uh, customer detail, an online user wants different things. Sorry, uh, someone who specializes in e-commerce wants different things than someone at the point of sale most of the time. So if you think about the difference between someone who runs a pizza shop versus someone who takes donations, the latter is far more interested in uh, the, the customer detail piece. Uh, rather than, you know, categorizing income based upon like which slices are working best type of thing. And then finally, the, the, the commerce link for desktop client, would you mind going back two slides just for everyone's Absolutely. edification? Right here to our daily summary example. Yeah, so uh, again, everyone will be able to look at this, but number eight, 
uh, that's the conduit through which we are able to communicate with the company file, whether it's local to the PC or remote on um, a you know a, a remote host like uh, Right Networks or or Swissnet, and so it's really dumb. <laughs> it just does what it's told, and it syncs automatically. And there are some really cool bells and whistles with this. We, we partnered directly with both Intuit and Square back in 2015 to uh, uh, create a replacement for Intuit Sync Manager, which probably resonates with some people in this room. And so it does things like the automated sync out of the system tray, but then we have other things like if we put out an update, it'll automatically update. I think a lot of people use tools like Spotify or Slack and you, you open it and you see it flicker and it's up automatically updating under the scenes and we're using the same type of technology. A, a real big one is the uh, ability to deliver remote logging. So you know that like QuickBooks desktop logging goes in this like really arcane place that's actually unfindable by default. You have to enable like show hidden files and then it's inscrutable. And so it's a lot of data, but if someone's having issues that aren't immediately apparent, we can check that box and have it shipped to our team of not just customer experience, but engineers up to and including myself to troubleshoot a lot faster. So you can get something done in 30 minutes that could take could have taken 30 days in the past. That, that's, that's brilliant. I love it that you're able to go back to that reference. Thank you. So I'll, I'll take us forward again to back where we were when we were looking at the um, right. customers and, and here we are. I, I think that that's it there. We can, we can kind of move through the next two slides pretty quickly and then leave you a few minutes just to kind of uh, uh, tie things in a bow. Uh, I mentioned sales tax variations, so more for the confidence of everyone in the room, all of the things that you deal with on a daily basis, multiple tax rates, combined tax rates, which could be combined on the payment side or the QuickBooks side or both or neither, and making sure that that maps up correctly, custom tax rate mapping. One of the challenges that we uh, ran into is, you know, there's... Uh, automated sales tax and like Avalara tax jar are all doing things in one way. And the point of sale was doing things in another way. And then QuickBooks gets confused. So we had to like really like kind of scrounge to make sure that if it's 8%, then it's 8%. It doesn't matter like what you're calling it because there are very specific rules that we all know about in that regard. Um, next slide. And, and then sometimes you disagree with what the accounting software says, what the actual tax was collected, which it doesn't matter if it went across from bank to bank, then you have to report it that way. And so that's another one. And then finally, um, inclusive sales tax. This is more of a UK thing, but believe it or not, uh, people actually you know, do that in the US. You want $5 to be $5 for simplicity of, of marketing or, or what have you. And so that's just an example of the, the richness that we have in terms of something that's like very nuanced, which is the support of sales tax in an automated fashion in the US, which ties back to, of course, what, um, what Heather had, had uh, under, underscored regarding the importance of reconciliation because a penny off, you know, kind of ruins things, which takes me to the bottom, which is suspense entries. Um, sometimes things just don't add up from the, the provider. You know, I think of examples where a Clover order for $53 only took in $40. And maybe the person, the employee at the stand gave his buddy a discount. And we, so we, we have to figure that out without, uh, uh, you know, ruining the daily summary, like the, 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 the kind of matching of the reconciliation in that regard. And so we use the concept of suspense entries in that way where like, all right, this $13 doesn't make sense, but it's really easy to report on and you can figure it out later versus having to spend four hours manually entering an entire day. And then I think we all know how buy now, pay later has come out. There's just a related area that we've worked in, in terms of same day delayed fulfillment when you pay something and go pick up the plant a couple of days later. 
uh, buy now, pay later, we're all acutely aware of. And then on account, which is a similar kind of concept that that has really come out of light speed. It's a very Australian way of, of putting uh, the concept of I am paying for things not necessarily at the time same time I'm getting them uh, or I'm paying for them on a sliding scale. Which is becoming more and more common. Like I think we're seeing that all over the place. But as uh, accountants and bookkeepers is one of those that we have to be able to account for. So you cool. know one of one of the questions and I'm gonna I'm gonna pause that the rest of this question for in a minute, but one of the questions was, what some of the things that are different about Commerce Sync as to some of your competitors? And one of the things that I would say is that you are paying attention to those kinds of scenarios that happen because of you know, so many people buying online. This whole idea of buy now, pay later was developed and it became a concept that many different vendors wanted to grab a hold of but there wasn't yet a way in order to account for that. That's one of those areas that Commerce Sync jumped in fast. One of the other things that I would say that's different about Commerce Sync versus some of the competitors is that you've got this ability to um, pivot whenever necessary. Mapping is something that um, you've, you've designed a tool so that way we can go in and we have some controls ourselves. Every client's a little bit different. So sometimes we need to have more control. Sometimes we need less. And like you said, sometimes it's really just click and go and up, you're up and running. But I think that it's it's important to really take note of the amount of variety that you have whenever you've you've already taken this concept of I need to be able to gather all of this information and properly put it into QuickBooks. That's one of the ways that I think you stand out. Thank you. And Nancy, I hope we become friends uh, because it would probably take three more hours to fully answer your question because we're definitely familiar with folks like Shogo and Shopkeep. Uh, price is certainly one of, you know, I think as a takeaway, Liz and, and Heather, uh, since we're part of like your fancy new program now, as uh, evidenced on one of the earlier slides, would be like just like a list of 10 differentiating points between us and our competitors. And we've uh, talked about uh, we've talked about that uh, in a, in a couple of different ways. Whether it's historical, the sanctity of the the daily summary, not ruining your general ledger, um, our our tax knowledge, our ability to pivot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think we can distill that into a really nice piece that next time someone like Nancy, although we'll have a drink at Scaling New Heights, but uh, the net net Nancy 2.0 then I can just like cut and paste the, the 10 points right here. And so that's, that's the goal. You know, another thing that, that I will add in is that, you know, Nancy was talking about um, needing to work with a developer previously in order to develop something that would allow for this kind of sync. I, Nancy, I'm in the same boat. I've done the same thing, which is how I was able to connect with Commerce Sync. That was one of the things that I was solving for for my clients. And a lot of times clients, even now, whenever I, I work with them, they don't understand that there's not something already designed for all of these tools to export directly into QuickBooks, which is why you have to have a solid tool to be able to trust to handle all of these high volumes of sales. So with that being said, am I able to advance to the exciting news? Yes. Okay. All right. So here's our star. Oh, so <laughs> what else is coming up? Okay, all right. So that was fun because I think that this is big news to be able to celebrate. But I will go ahead and advance to here because I'm going to allow you to share other things yeah. that are also happening. You, you just have a couple of couple of points, so to speak. Uh, I did that on purpose. Uh, I don't know if, who's familiar with Point, but I think a lot of people are familiar with GoDaddy. Uh, they acquired Point in late 2020, like Lightspeed did things and Fiserv did things, et cetera, et cetera. And so we recently just started working um, with, with GoDaddy. And so Point has a lot of distribution partners that are actually, the Omni in Atlanta is really complicated. So just word of warning anytime you come here. Um, but be that as it may, uh, you know, it may be possible that we do another happy hour 
months on down the line when we're doing the exact same thing that we just did for light speed for, for point because they don't have a, an appropriate solution and we're there to provide it. And we also have the QuickBooks desktop kicker alongside a lot of the other differentiating pieces. Uh, Liz is most excited about the fact that everything we just talked about was sales sync, but we're working with, we've been working with Visa for several years on the expense side of the equation. Start to think about like the holistic small business experience and they sell things, but they also have to buy things to sell things, you know? And so when you start to talk about simply the same type of mapping into an income account, but instead to an expense account on a credit card that was used from a participating bank with Visa, then that's that's what we're doing. And uh, looking ahead, we've been, again, working with folks like Sage Business Cloud and FreshBooks. What we really want to do is try to solve that in a in a kind of uh, holistic fashion for what we do from an automated bookkeeping perspective. Um, and then and then the last is just kind of futures in terms of the types of things that we're working on. COGS is very related to expense sync. MindBody doesn't have an appropriate solution and opened up their API and uh, so on. So I think that's my cue to exit. Well, I'm going to say that there's a couple of questions here. And so one of the one of the questions that's that's being asked is um, what about con other connections? So other integrations that Commerce Syncs connects to, do you want to kind of maybe highlight some of the, the main ones? Yeah, so Lightspeed is the first one. And then GoDaddy slash Point is the second one. I, I, I see the question from Ross about Shopify. I don't know if, Liz, that might be your cue to chime in on well, the dynamic there. Um, um, well, in, in what way? Do you want me to, to talk about like the, the Shopify um, integration or are you wanting to we, we've we've attempted to work with with Shopify in in uh you know over the past year and a half and we have an integration ready to go and so then the, the you know the kind of question is like can we provide starting with the QuickBooks desktop connectivity uh right away with some of the the kind of dynamic um with QuickBooks payments that's going on so I think that the flexibility that you have is one of those that um, I think is important to, to keep in mind. Uh, the fact that you are also considering the expense side. Yes, I get excited about the sales side, but expenses, like you said, are necessary. And being able to have a tool for both ends is extraordinarily exciting. Heather, what were you saying here too? It is super exciting. Oh, the QuickBooks desktop integration. Yeah, no, the QuickBooks desktop integration is a big, you know, that's a big one too. Um, there's not a lot of solutions out there that are providing that in a really good way. So I think that's that's a huge differentiator as well. I agree. All those people who have been scrambling for a place to land whenever they're thinking about uh, QuickBooks desktop point of sale going away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what do we do? We're not ready to or may never be ready to convert to QuickBooks Online. That may not be the appropriate solution. So what is, and having a, a option readily available, that's one of the reasons that we wanted to make sure to bring this to you timely was so that we, you know, everybody here could hear about another solution for those who are inside of the QuickBooks desktop point of sale. I'm going to say that we have enjoyed having you with us. We were talking about doing a coolest thing. So we're going to pause our coolest thing until next time that we meet. I know a lot of you are Canva users, so we will hold that till next time. And Heather, you have launched the poll. And so anybody here who would like more information about Commerce Sync, how it works, getting connected, what are all some of the integration options, all of those kinds of questions. If you say yes to the poll, then we will be able to pass along a lot of information. information. Fantastic. Really good. All right. And, and uh, Liz, Heather, thank you so much. Thanks so much to your team that I know works hard on this behind the scenes. And thanks to everyone for your, your attention and uh, your, your questions both uh, today and tomorrow. And Nancy, you'll definitely get that drink in St. Louis. So look forward to it. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Stephen. This was fantastic. 
a uh, great drink. I wish I could drink the whole drink, but I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna share with. But, yeah, uh, wellness. wellness, you do you. Yeah. <laughs> and the layers. I did, yeah. I filled the layers. I got them, They're, they look even better than they did. So it's looking good. It's a work of art. It Just is a work of art. Freeze it, don't touch it. All right, thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs> have, have a great evening, take care. Thank you for joining us. And those of you who are listening, you know, what's coming up next is we're going to have another firm spotlight, which we love. And so we're going to have Kelly Gonzalez join us. And so she's going to be talking about her tech stack, what she uses, how she uses it. Can't wait. And then on the 16th, we're going to have Avalara and Client Hub. So of course, some of our dear friends there. I love it whenever Judy gets to join us. She will be here talking about Client Hub. And then on the 23rd, we will be able to do a sender deep dive. Lots of exciting things coming up. I wish all the best to everyone who is with us today. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. But before I do that, I'm just going to count you down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Fantastic. And I just, Liz, before everybody, I know everybody's going to jump off. But before you do, I actually have a big announcement that I would like to make to our community. Um, yesterday. The Accounting Cornerstone Foundation launched our scholarship initiative <clears throat> back at Appy Camp in, in September. Um, somebody wrote on our What If board, what if there was a scholarship program to help accounting professionals get to the conferences that you and I both know are game changers in your life and in your firm? <clears throat> what if that existed? What if that actually existed and people could apply for um, a free ticket for lodging and airfare and support from the community to actually make that happen for them. And so uh, Don Brolin and Kate Johnson and a bunch of other amazing people that on our board have actually launched this. And we are now accepting both donations from those of you that understand the importance of this and want to help get someone who should be at a conference to a conference. Um, or if you're somebody that wants to go to a conference and you would like to apply, you can learn more about the scholarship. And I'm gonna throw the URL in. It's accountingcornerstone.com. Corner, and I gotta type it right. Uh, dot org, sorry, accounting cornerstone, uh, cornerstone cornerstone.org. Um, so if you are interested in applying for that scholarship, we are going to be moving fast because a couple of a couple of these conferences are coming up quick. So we have Scaling New Heights coming up in June and we have the Latino Tax Fest that's coming up in July. So, you know, feel free to check out our website and I hope that you will donate and or apply. Uh, we're really excited about it. That is very exciting news. I, I think that myself and those in the community are applaud you for that hard work and dedication because there are people who want to get to these conferences but haven't quite made the the financial gains in order to be able to get there. And if they got but, there, they would make the financial gains. And would so yeah, it's all about. So awesome, nicely done, nicely done. All right, everybody. Thanks, Take care. Again. Take care. Bye, all.